And so it's about change. It's about change, you know, what it is that we saw happen to Jesus. But, but change is really a part of what happens around us all the time. Um, I was reminded of, uh, of that when I was thinking about some of the programs and things that my kids have watched. Transformers. Does anybody know Transformers? Have you seen? So I, th- I think there are probably are some people here who don't know what Transformers are. So <clears throat> could somebody volunteer to explain to the rest of us what Transformers are? Is there a, oh, there's a volunteer. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to give you a mic. Can you hold on? There you go. Go ahead. Robots in disguise. Robots in Skies. In the skies, okay. What does that mean, robots in the skies? What's that mean? But what are, what are the robots? Robots, oh, robots not in the skies, but in the skies. There you go, there you go. And, uh, and so, is there somebody else? So, what's the purpose of robots in disguise? What do they do? Somebody else? They change. They do. So what's the... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. They fight. They fight. And why do they fight? Just because they're not happy about things? They fight bad guys. They fight bad guys. So it's like things are going okay, and then all of a sudden some bad guys come and try to ruin the day, and then... No, the oh, 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 oh yeah, here, hold this. This person bought a car, and it was a transformer. The person bought a car. Bought a car? And it turned out to be a transformer. <laughs> and that was, why is that good? It was just in the shop. <laughs> but it has to do with bad guys, right? Yeah, but the car was broken. Oh, okay. So there's lots of changes and lots of kinds of things that, that go on. But it's about, it's about a battle, right? I mean, there's, so you fight bad guys. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah. So can you think of a good kind of transformer that's, what's your favorite transformer? Um, you don't know? Don't know Stay oh, I see, a, I see a favorite enthusiastic transformer fan back here. Go ahead. The Bumblebee Dude. The Bumblebee Dude. And what does he do? He fights. He fights bad guys. Yeah. Oh, and what does he transform into? Uh, like he's a regular person and he transforms into? No, the cars and then they transform into like robot ah. thingies. Into a bumblebee. Mm-hmm. Oh, very cool. Very cool. <laughs> now, the DVDs are for sale in the library. <laughs> 25 bucks a pop. <laughs> um, this whole issue of transformation, of changing, um, is big in us. Uh, th- there is this sense that things change, um, that things go from one thing to another thing. And um, let me ask you this question, is, do you think people change? Do you think people change? Yeah. Well, so if we come to, to the gospel lesson for this morning, let's look at the example of one person who changed, and that was Jesus, right? In the gospel lesson for this morning, Jesus certainly changed. So let's describe a little bit about how it is, what it is that happened um, with Jesus when he changed. So. He took his three best friends, Peter, James, and John, and they went off to this mountain. Now, what happened just before this is that Peter is there with Jesus and some of the other disciples, and Jesus asks them the question. He says, who do people say that I am? And some of them say, well, you're one of the great prophets, you're Elijah, you're John the Baptist, you know, you're all of those guys. And, And so then Jesus says to them, well, what about you? Who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ, the anointed one, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, ding, 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 you got the right answer. That's exactly right, Peter. That's exactly what it is. And so now, immediately, Jesus takes his three disciples, the three closest to him, Peter, James, and John, and he says, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something just between us. And so they go... They go up to this mountain. How's that? Good? So they go off to this mountain, just the four of them. And all of a sudden, Jesus is standing there, just like them. And things begin to happen. 
So they see, all of a sudden, Jesus. And what happens to Jesus? Do you remember from the story what happens? Can you think of it? He turns, yeah, it's like he turned on a switch or something. And all of a sudden, he becomes bright, shining white. Now, oftentimes in the Old Testament, that's the, that's the sign of glory. Just glory that's shining. It's so bright. It's like you're trying to look at the sun, but you can't look at it because it's so bright. It's so impressive. It's so amazing. Jesus all of a sudden is just glowing like you've never seen anything like that glow except the brightest light. And then do you remember some of the other things that happen? Um, there is a, what, what the, the cloud, right, that envelops them. So there's a big cloud that comes. And in the Old Testament, oftentimes that's a sign of the presence of God. So if you wanted to know where God was, you wanted to follow God, he took a, by night there was a, there was a burning, there was a, a pillar of fire, but during the day there was a pillar of cloud and it was the presence of God. So you could see the, the glory of God. You couldn't actually see him, but you could see a cloud. And then there was something that, uh, that they heard with their ears. Do you remember that? A voice. And what did the voice say? Do you remember? You are my son. This is my son my, in whom I am well pleased, my well-beloved son. That's exactly right. So this is, in fact, those are almost exactly the same words that were said when Jesus was baptized, with one exception. Um, he says, this is my son who is, who is well-loved. He says, listen to him. Listen to him. And so all of a sudden there's this, this calling that we have, that the, the, these disciples have, to, oh, you know, this thing's going on with Jesus. There's this cloud, and he's bright and everything, and this voice comes out, and, uh, and the voice says, this is my well-beloved son. That's pretty impressive. But now it says, listen to him. Listen to him. Why do you think that, I mean, don't you think we probably ought to pay attention if this voice you know, calls out of heaven and tries to tell us something? I mean, wouldn't you, if a voice called to you out of heaven and said, I think you got you to gotta go down to, uh, to 7-Eleven and buy a Diet Coke right now, and a voice has said that, yeah, I mean, I'd feel inclined to probably do that. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? So, but why do you think this voice, the voice of God, um, says to these three disciples, listen to him? Why would he say that? Any guesses? I'm sorry? Exactly right. So they're going to take this message out, but it's a message for them to take out, but it's also a message probably for them too, huh? To be able to listen to him. To be able to listen to him. And that must mean that if they didn't listen to them, if they didn't listen to him, things would be one way. And if they did listen to him, things would be another way. So by listening to him, they would be different people. Things would, for them, change. Things would change for them because they listened to who he was. So there's a sense of, if we listen to Jesus, then all of a sudden there's an opportunity to change, to become perhaps more like him, to do the things that he tells for us to do to think like Jesus, to act like Jesus, to feel like Jesus, to see things that Jesus does, to do take on the perspective of Jesus. Um, St. Paul, in the New Testament, talks about putting on Jesus Christ, putting on Jesus Christ, like a garment kind of thing. So that's one way of being able to see things change, because we, we put on Jesus, just like we put on any kind of other garment or any kind of, of costume, and we begin to act like the costume that we put on. Um, when I was a kid, our family business was an amusement park, uh, much smaller than Disney World. No, don't think Disney World. Think of a roadside kind of storybook fantasy amusement park. And at one point, um, we bought costumes. And we had three different costumes that we bought. Um, one was a pig, um, big, kind of round like this pink pig with a big head on it. Um, that, was, that costume was too small for me. But the other two, 
um, weren't too small. Uh, the other one was uh, a rabbit, so a big, tall, white rabbit with big ears that went up. And then the other one, the third one, was a gorilla. And that was kind of a rubber suit, you know, hairy, black with hands and this kind of gruesome face. And so we had just gotten these costumes, and we had also just gotten an invitation because it was getting up close to Easter, um, so we thought we would go to, uh, to the local mall. They had an Easter bunny, so we used our Easter bunny for their Easter bunny. And so we decided, well, we'll throw in the other two as well. We'll throw in the pig and the gorilla, right? So, so, so I, I, we, I put on the, the, uh, the somebody, my, I think my, it was my aunt who put on the, um, the rabbit suit and somebody else put on the, the pig suit and I put on the gorilla suit, all right? So, uh, so we, they, the, the rabbit went out first and the rabbit is just kind of walking like this, you know? And the kids, I mean, kids in the mall see the rabbit, you know, coming out before Easter, and it's like, oh, they just flock from all over the place. So the rabbit's just kind of walking like this and kind of bouncy. And so it's, you begin to take on, you're wearing this costume, and so you begin to take on, you know, the personality of the costume. So you're, you're, you, nobody can see your face, but you're smiling. And you can't just, you can't be a rabbit and just kind of go... I mean, you gotta, you just got a little bounce, you know? And so when you see the kids who are there, they start coming around, and so you, they want to hold your hand, and you walk, and there's this gathering of kids that are around you. It's, it's really kind of fun. And, and the same thing with the pig. I mean, they were all kind of gathering around, and it was great, big crowds of kids that were coming around. And then it was my turn. <laughs> and so, you know, you can't be a gorilla and walk around like, What's a gorilla do? Well, a gorilla goes <laughs> and goes like this, right? And beats his chest. Well, I didn't think through about you know, a, a, a mall and kids. And so, so, so I came out of the back room where all of these kids were entranced by the rabbit and the, and the pig, and I just came out and went <laughs> they just took off, <laughs> hiding in the stores, hiding behind their moms and dads, crying kids all over the place. That was, not, that was the last time we ever took the gorilla <laughs> to the mall. What you put on matters, because it shapes how you think, how you walk, how you relate to the people around you. It matters because things change. We change because of what we put on. The invitation for Jesus, for us, from Jesus for us, is to put him on. To see things through his eyes. To touch people through his hands. To move like he moves, to hang with people that he would hang with, to shape our lives and our priorities like he would shape his, to take him on and to begin living through his skin in this world. You know, it's interesting, we call this the Sunday of the Transfiguration, and we call it like that because Jesus changed, lit up like a light bulb. But, you know, the reality is, Jesus didn't change at all. You know, all he did was to reveal who he was from the inside always. He just revealed what was always there. But there was a change that happened. And it wasn't so much Jesus as it was the other three guys that were there. Those three guys who saw who Jesus was, who heard God invite them to listen to him, to put him on. Jesus, after this experience, the light faded and he looked just like any other human being. But the change that happened in those three guys shook the world. 
So there's an invitation for us to be able to listen to him, to know more about him, to figure out how it is that we can put him on and live in his skin so that his glory can shine in the world. Amen.